What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another week one preview and prediction where we're going to be talking about two teams that played each other last year in Chapel Hill. This one going to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Both of these teams are filling in new quarterbacks as well as some other additional pieces around the team, but it should be an incredible one when the North Carolina Tar Heels hit the road for a Thursday opener against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And I can't wait to talk about this one because I really do think it's going to be a very fun matchup to watch. So we'll dive on into everything Tar Heels and Golden Gophers in just a little bit. But before I do that, you guys know I got to thank you so much for all the support this channel has seen as of late. And hey, if you want to continue to help support the channel, and if you're as big of a college football nerd as I am, and you want to hear more of what I have to say during the season, you want to watch more prediction videos, more thoughts, more content, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notified of literally whenever I post. It's going to help you guys stay up to date with what I'm doing here on the channel. And speaking of staying up, up to date well if you want to stay up to date with me in my own life outside of youtube my journey as a sports media student and uh, an aspiring sports media professional and all the field work i do and all the games i cover please go follow me on twitter at tailgate nate 29 i would really appreciate a follow over there and again continue to help support my youtube channel any way you can liking commenting sharing and just simply watching this video which i greatly thank you for taking time out of your day and doing it really does help support the channel and it means a lot to me so again subscribe support the channel, go follow me on Twitter against at tailgate Nate 29. And after you're done with all that, come back to this video and let's go ahead and talk Tar Heels and Golden Gophers. How do we do predictions around here at least uh, during the season for these games. Well, we're going to go through three keys to the game, and I'm going to sort of talk a little bit about what the game might look like when each team has the football on offense. So first, we're going to go through the Tar Heel offense versus the Gopher defense, and then we'll flip it. We'll talk about the Gopher offense versus the Tar Heel defense, and then at the end of the video, I'll give you my prediction on what I think is going to happen here in this game. So let's go ahead and go through, but by first, Talking about what happened in this game last year, it was a 31 to 13 win for the uh, Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. Drake May threw for over 400 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Uh, the Minnesota offense really just couldn't get a whole lot going. The defense had some good moments, but ultimately couldn't slow down Drake May, and it is what led to their downfall. Now, Minnesota's got a lot of new pieces to use this year that I will be talking about in just a little bit offensively. But defensively, well, Minnesota really did struggle last year as we look at the keys of the game when UNC has the football. I want to talk about the Gopher defense first for just a little bit because they did lose a lot of really important pieces last year. A lot of important pieces on the defensive front, the linebacker room, in the secondary. But overall, you do get a lot of really good returning talent back. And this wasn't a Minnesota defense that we had seen over the past couple of years. The pass rush was not as good. They were still forcing turnovers, but the pass rush wasn't as good. They weren't as good on third downs. The secondary just was not up to the standard that P.J. Fleck has set there with this program. And the defense that looked look, I still expect to be really good this year, and it's definitely going to take a step up from where it was last season. You got guys on the defensive run, uh, front like Jaw Joyner, Devin Eastern, Jalen Logan Redding, Danny uh, Strigo. That's going to be your starting four up there. Linebackers are excellent. Secondary, you have Justin Wally, Jack Henderson, Ethan Robinson, who's a transfer corner coming in. Some other really good players at safety. And I think Minnesota is going to end up being a pretty solid defense this season at the very least. I do think they will improve from where they were last season. But more of the keys that I have here are on the North Carolina side because, well, you just heard me mention in last year's contest, Drake May threw for over 400 yards. Well, he's with the New England Patriots now. So Max Johnson is a Texas A&M transfer that comes in to fill the gap at the quarterback position. Again, it's a pass game that had almost 300 yards per game last year. Is Johnson going to be able to fill the May size hole? And unlike most of my keys here, when I ask, questions, right? I don't really give you an answer. I kind of talk about, well, this could happen. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Max Johnson is going to be Drake May. That, that's just not going to happen. Drake May was too good of a passer, too lethal, and I don't think Max Johnson has that kind of potential. Do I think Max Johnson has the potential to be a really, really good quarterback for North Carolina? Yes, absolutely. They probably are not going to be close to 300 yards per game passing last year, but Johnson's a guy that can come in, provide some really good value. He's a great passer of the football, and I think he's developed in this offense really, really well. But the big the big name to watch here is Omari and Hampton, a guy that rushed for over 1,500 yards last season, one of the leading rushers across the entire country, comes back this season, and he is just going to be an absolute force as a true junior but 
What the Gopher run defense did last season is they were able to slow him down, and a lot of those guys on the defensive front are going to be returning for Minnesota this year. Now, again, they did lose a couple of their bigger playmakers, but uh, again, you just heard me list that defensive front talent. There's still a lot of really effective, really good pass rushers, and really good guys at being able to stuff the run here. Line of scrimmage play could definitely be won by Minnesota's defense, and I think it will be. They're going to get more pressure than they did last year. I think the run defense is still going to be up to code of where it was last season, and North Carolina's offensive line struggled last year. 37 sacks allowed. They turned the football over 17 times. I think Minnesota's going to be able to force a turnover. They're going to be able to get some pressure overall, win that line of scrimmage battle. Are they going to be able to stuff Hampton as much as they were last year? And just for sort of background, 13 carries, 46 yards, and one touchdown for Hampton in last year's contest. So was still able to break, was still able to break into the end zone, but he only averaged 3.5 yards per carry in that game when he averaged near six yards per carry throughout the entirety of last season. I do not think Omari and Hampton is going to have as bad of a of a day as he did against this Gopher defense last year, but that's exactly what the Gopher defense is going to look to do. They got to slow him down because if you can't slow down Hampton, well, that's just going to open the pass game even more for Max Johnson to try to get it out to some of these really talented receivers North Carolina has, like Nate McCollum, Gavin Blackwell, J.J. Jones, and others there as well. But will key losses hurt Minnesota on the defensive end? Again, they lost uh, a ton of talent, mainly throughout that uh, secondary last season, but mainly, or, or, or uh, yes, mainly throughout the secondary, but really throughout this entire defense, there are a lot of key players, a lot of leaders, a lot of really good talent from the Gopher defense that will no longer be playing football in Minneapolis this year. So how much do those losses hurt them and how much do guys step up and play a bigger role? I think they have to improve in the very least at getting some more pressure, getting off the field faster on third downs. It just wasn't a great third down defense last year. And then I think the rest of the game is going to be able to follow, right? If you get off the field quicker, you're inevitably going to allow fewer and fewer yards I think this is a defense that's going to improve. But again, even though Drake May is no longer there, I think Max Johnson's going to be serviceable enough. Omari and Hampton's going to have a better game than he did last season. And Minnesota's going to need to look to slow him down as much as possible, as well as get pressure back to Max Johnson. But when you take a look at the keys to when Minnesota has the, the football, well, it's going to be a completely different script flip because you take a look at those stats from Minnesota last year, only 21 points per game, barely 300 yards per game. They didn't even average five yards per play. That's going to get a whole lot better when Max Brosmer comes over from New Hampshire. Threw for over 3,000 yards last season, was an exceptional quarterback for the Wildcats of New Hampshire. And I think Minnesota really did find themselves a diamond in the rough. I think he's going to be an excellent, excellent addition to this offense and a much, much better quarterback than Ethan Kaliak Manis was last season. And let's just be honest with ourselves for a second. While Kaliak Manis has some good fundamentals and things, he overall just was not a great quarterback for this program. I think Max Brosmer is going to be a phenomenal player. You return Darius Taylor, who's going to be a true sophomore. C.A. Bangura and Marcus Major are running back transfers. So, hey, the line of scrimmage battle can easily be won by... Minnesota here, especially because North Carolina does lose some pretty important pass rushers from last year, such as Miles Murphy and others. And again, overall was a defense that struggled defending the run, struggled defending the pass. Yes, they were able to get pressure back to the quarterback uh, fairly often. Again, they forced 28 sacks last year. Uh, they forced 22 turnovers last season, but they were on the field a lot. Minnesota likes to run the football. P.J. Fleck loves that ground game, and they love to control the clock. And now with a guy who has a really, really good arm in Max Brosmer. That's just going to open up things even more in this pass game. Again, guys, the pass game only averaged 143 passing yards last year. I think this year for the Golden Gophers, they're going to be averaging at least I'll say 210 passing yards per game because, again, is Brosmer a diamond in the rough? Is he going to be the quarterback that Minnesota's been missing? They haven't really had good quarterback play since they were a top 25 caliber team, even a top 15 caliber team in 2019 when Tanner Morgan had that very, very, very good season. Again, Tanner Morgan just didn't live up to that expectation throughout the rest of his Golden Gopher career. I think they found their guy in Max Brosmer, and I think he's going to be a really, really good addition to this offense that's going to be able to turn things around. But again, North Carolina, if they're going to want to win this game, you got to get pressure back, uh, back to Max Brosmer because they're still, even without Chris Ottman Bell, even without Brevin Spanford, there are some talented wide receiving pieces here. Elijah Spencer, Daniel Jackson, uh, Brockington in the tight end room. You have Calarup and Gears. There are some really good receivers here on this 
Minnesota team. The defensive front, though, must do well to stop the run because, again, that's what P.J. Fleck is going to want to look to push first. Darius Taylor, C.A. Bangura, Marcus Major, Jordan Newbin, Jaron Mangum. You really could go five or six deep with this Minnesota running back room before you really say, okay, we can – assuredly lock this guy down. At the very least, you can go three deep. Darius Taylor, C.A. Bangura, and Marcus Major are all going to be vital parts of the run game this year. And with the Heels defense, especially on the defensive front, losing a lot of really important talent from last season, that's going to be very important there. you got to win the battle on the line of scrimmage to slow this run game down, make Max Brosmer prove that he is fit in well with this system, that he has learned everything he needs to throughout the spring, summer, and fall camp and make Max Brosmer win this game for the Golden Gophers. Now, this Gophers offensive line, though, I think they can play bully ball. They're going to be able to play bully ball in the trenches all day long and creating options for this running game and creating time for Max Brosmer to get the ball downfield. And I think that's going to make a huge difference in this game. If North Carolina is going to want to slow Minnesota down, I really do think that, look, again, that defensive front is going to have to really impress me. They're going to have to create a ton of pressure. Guys such as Desmond Evans and Kevin Hester and some of the, even these linebackers like Kamon Rucker and Power Eccles and Amari Campbell, they, they actually could be one of the better linebacking units in the entire ACC because I think Kamon Rucker is an absolute stud. He's a linebacker, defensive edge rush duo. He's going to kind of fill in and be able to create that pressure. I don't know how it took me this long to say his name, but Kamon Rucker is going to need to be a force here. He's got to get into the backfield. He's got to get Max Brosmer down. He has got to slow down this rushing attack and create pressure through this gopher offensive line. But I think the battle in the trenches, possibly on both sides, will be won by Minnesota here in this game. Now, North Carolina, again, all lines and odds as of recording this video, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow on Fox. It does surprise me a little bit, but again, as of recording this video, North Carolina is a one and a half point favorite because I think the Gophers are going to win this game. I got them winning this one 27 to 23. I think battle in the trenches is a huge, huge piece to this. And while I think Max Johnson is going to be fine and Omari and Hampton has a little bit of a better day than he did in Chapel Hill last year, I think the Golden Gophers are going to do enough to slow him down. I think Max Brosmer is going to be a really, really, really good player for this Minnesota team. He's got a lot of good weapons, but again, ultimately it's trench play. Losing Miles Murphy, yes, you still have guys like Kamon Rucker and Power Eccles and Desmond Evans. That's going to be able to provide some pressure to this uh, backfield for the North Carolina defense. And you got some other good players here in that defensive backfield, that linebacker room. But I think Minnesota is going to be a little bit too much. And it's really tough, sneaky tough, to go on the road and pull off a win against P.J. Flex program. And I think, again, Minnesota sees some great quarterback play this year. The run game is going to be working. They're going to win the battle in the trenches. And the Golden Gophers uh, are going to be able to win their season opening game here against the North Carolina Tar Heels in what could be a start to a sleeper Big Ten season. And North Carolina falls behind already at 0-1-1. Let me know what you guys think about this game in the comment section down below. I'm really intrigued to watch this one. I think it's going to be a very fun game to watch. And, hey, please. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. We'll get into some of the biggest games to be played on Saturday, either later on today or starting tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Again, play hard, but tailgate harder. And remember to stay hydrated. Goodbye.